Welcome to Case Hardening 101. Now, some of you know that I case harden almost every tool in my shop. Most of you don't. Today, you're going to learn how I do it. I've been meaning to put out this video for a while, but I wanted to wait so I got that propane forge built so I can show you two methods of doing it. Now, I've got a variety of things here that I want to case harden. I've got some drift pins. I got some guillotine tool dies and I case harden a lot of my knives. Yes, you can case harden and make a good knife. So what is case hardening? Case hardening is taking a piece of iron, I know this is mild steel, but we're going to call it iron. It's taking a piece of iron and putting a jacket of high carbon steel on it, which gives you toughness, wear resistance, and in the case of a knife, an edge that will hold. So in order to case harden, we need four things. We need our piece to be case hardened, a container to hold it, our case hardening compound, and heat. Now, containers, you can, I like these black iron threaded pipes with two end caps, but you can also use round or square tubing, uh, flat plate welded on either end. If you take the welding method, leave a quarter inch gap either end where there's no weld so the pressure can vent. And with these, these threads are not airtight, so they will vent just fine. I will not say that you can't burst one of these, because I did in the making of this video, but uh, that was my fault, and I will tell you more about that later on. <clears throat> now, case hardening compound. This is just off-brand Tums that I put in a blender and ground into a fine powder. Why does why Tums? Tums has. Uh, sucrose or dextrose in it, which is sugar basically. Uh, sugar is our carbon source. And then I believe the other fancy thing in there we need to know about is calcium carbonate. And that helps it do some fancy chemical reaction -y stuff. Basically what happens inside this container is that sugar burns, turns to carbon. Sugar is almost pure carbon. So it burns, turns to carbon. Calcium carbonate reacts with stuff, the air, and uh, makes carbon monoxide, and the carbon monoxide diffuses into the pores of the metal. And uh, carbon likes to go from areas of high concentration to low concentration. So it basically just drops off the carbon into the steel, or iron, to become steel. It's not, it doesn't penetrate all the way through, only the surface. But uh, there's a phenomenon called carbon migration, which we'll talk about later. So what is carbon migration? Now, if you ever made Damascus between uh, high carbon steel and the lower carbon steel, you might have run into this problem. There, it's a problem. Where uh, you just have this big black smudge into your pattern can't get rid of it and uh, that is where the carbon migrated from the high carbon steel to the low carbon steel and in fact how steel used to be made was you would case harden a bunch of pieces okay now when we case harden it doesn't just come in like a sixteenth of an inch and done it comes in from this side from this side, from this side, this, this, this side, this side. It's coming in from all sides. Now, what you would do after that is you got your nice high carbon on the outside, but it's still mild steel or iron on the inside. You would stack these, forge weld them together into a new bar. And during that forge welding, Carbon, again, high concentrations to low concentrations. Carbon migrates to the 
lower carbon portions in this and makes a more homogeneous steel. So while it may have been zero points of carbon on, in the middle before, and like a point of carbon on the outside, it's forge welding it together into this new bar and that carbon migrating away has evened it out to about, oh, we'll say like half a percent of carbon. So why do we need to know why steel used to be made in carbon migration? Because during our subsequent forging of these pieces, that carbon is going to migrate away from the outside to the inside. And again, if we're making Damascus, that's something to take into account. Is your carbon going to migrate and mess up your pattern? Now the first step we need to take in case arming is to get our metal clean. You can see there's a bunch of forge scale on this piece. The carbon diffuses better into clean metal and you don't have to worry about scale inside that container because again the oxygen is going to go undergo a chemical reaction and change into carbon monoxide which will not forge form scale on your piece. So don't use a new belt for this. I save all my old belts just for taking off this forge scale, taking it down to bare metal. doesn't have to be perfect. by adding a little bit. Putting in some of our pieces. Now this method is called pack carburizing and uh, it is the least uh, the least efficient one could say mostly done by hobbyists like you and I I'm tap the container Make sure it's getting around everywhere. I've already reduced the level in here by a quarter of where it was at. There we go. Okay, here's option number one. Campfire. See, I've been burning it for a while. I got a good bed of coals. And place that right in there. 
cover this sucker with wood. Once this burns down, we're, we're, we're going to want to try and keep it about flush, the, the, uh, the wood pile about flush with the top of these bricks. And uh, once you see that container glow in orange, reddish orange, it's about a, you want to sit, let it sit for about a 12 pack. And then uh, after that, let it, uh, or say you keep, keep feeding the fire for a 12 pack. And then, uh, once the 12 pack's gone, you let the fire cool down naturally. And here's option two. orange then we're gonna let it set for two hours I don't know if you can hear that it sounds like a jet that's the, uh, the pressure buildup being released from the looseness of those threads Okay, here's the progress on uh, case hardening. Now, I moved the two from the propane forge into here as well, because as you will see when I pull these pipes out, what I did was on that pipe, I put the seam right where the burner flame was hitting and I wasn't paying no attention to it. And I had the burner on full blast. I forgot I had the burner on full blast. What that did was it allowed the gas to make a bubble here. Once the steel became non-magnetic and lost integrity, it made a bubble. And then finally those gases burst that seam. It went whoop, put out the propane forge flame. That was it. No explosion, just a uh, depressur depressurization. Now you see we got a really good bed of coals in here. I've been using my forge hood on top as a cap to kind of help hold in the heat and trying to burn off the galvanization on it but uh, the pieces in here got red red hot around one o'clock it's almost three now so I'm gonna load up this last bit of wood let it go out on its own. <laughs> 